Hi, I'm Ricky Thomas with Cartersville Christian Voice, and we are here with what we call Covenant Conversations, where we bring uh, the political realm, if you will, to, to the stage, and we talk to them about faith and family. Uh, so often, I think, as a church world, we tend to ignore uh, elected officials, and a lot of these people are Christians serving in our community in different realms. And so we're bringing them to the stage, and we're going to talk to them about their faith in the Lord. We're going to talk to them about their family, that type of thing. Tonight with us is Dr. Davis Nelson. Davis, you're currently the, uh, I guess, would be the chairman of the school board, but that's not where this has started with you. Let, uh, we're going to start and get to all the things you've done, which is uh, probably more than one show really can hold. But let's start back. You are, Tell me a little bit about uh, growing up and, and your parents and what it was like when you were growing up. You grew up in Bartow County? Or tell I've, us. Yeah, I've always lived in Bartow County, still live in the um, Stylesburg area where I was born and lived all my life. Um, raised in a large family. Um, Five boys and one girl. The girl was the oldest and rode the roost. Uh, uh, my mother was a teacher, first grade teacher, and my dad worked in a uh, uh, farm and he also worked with Shell Oil Company and uh, in later years worked for Union Carbide. So you grew up in a family with a, with a lot of boys. How is, how is that different? What, what do you think you learned having a lot of brothers? Were you oldest, younger, or surviving? I was the youngest for 10 years and then a surprise came along. Uh, so uh, it, it, it is different. It's, what you find is that you learn how to uh, negotiate. You learn how to deal with people uh, because all of us were different in our own ways. And my parents were not well off, so we had to learn to share. Uh, I think I had my first own personal clothes when I was in about the ninth or tenth grade. I'd always had hand-me-downs. Or my mom made them, right. uh, and uh, so it was a treat to get to get the brand new clothes. A lot of times the toys were hand-me-downs, uh, or we'd get a new bicycle for Christmas, uh, and then an older brother would take it, take it apart. Those kind of fun things. Yeah, but it, it was neat growing up. Uh, we grew up back then. Uh, Stylesburg was out in the country. Right. Uh, now it's, it's still kind of in the country. It, it still is a little in the country, but. Uh, you know, we knew all of our neighbors. It was just a, a few of us out there, and, and we played together and grew up together. Um, it, it was just, it was a good time. Brothers and sisters still live in this area, so close uh, with Part them. of them do, uh, uh, and part of them live, uh, a sister lives in Alabama, uh, got a brother in there, in Columbus, but the rest of them are pretty much around here. Brother being in education, obviously you followed in that path. How many of your uh, brothers and sisters have followed in? Just one. Just one. one, just one. Well, yeah. What are some of the rest of them doing? Uh, one is a, uh, my sister was a, uh, worked in a, as a secretary in a number of different offices. In later years worked for the Department of uh, Health in Rome. And uh, then uh, I had one brother work for Lockheed, another worked for Union Carbide, and then one uh, was a nurse anesthesiologist I'm assuming when you show up to family reunions or holidays and things like that, they don't treat you like an elected official. No, they never have. <laughs> uh, and of course, you know, with my mom and dad being passed away, we don't have those reunions anymore. But uh, no, uh, there was no special treatment. Parents, and I, and I think obviously my grandparents raised me, but uh, and, and dealing with school kids and everything, you find out aunts and uncles and different people get raised by different people. What was it about your parents that you think, uh, a couple things that maybe they really instituted in your life that they were big on that you carried through in your life? Well, they carried us to church. They didn't send us to church. Uh, church was a, a big part of our life growing up. It was a big part of my parents' life. Uh, they were active in the church. My dad was a deacon and the church clerk. My mother taught uh, Sunday school forever and ever. Uh, they. The community was my kin folks. Uh, all the aunts and uncles and great aunts and uncles and grandparents were all there and went to church together. Uh, so my parents were very violent. They instilled in us a work ethic. Every single one of us. We had chores to do. Before we went to school, one of mine was milking the cow. Before we went to school, uh, we, we had meals together. My mom taught. We were all involved in either sports or performing arts. So we were in every direction growing up, and, and they were always there. I don't know how they did it, but they were at our events, and uh, we felt 
felt supported when you were young? You said you were involved in sports. What were the things you were involved in? Sport you were involved in sports? Yeah, so I played football, basketball, track, um, and um, thoroughly enjoyed volleyball, volleyball. Was uh, how back far, back. when did you, I mean, some people play young and they play in high school. How far up? All the way. All the way. So you did play in high school? Yeah. So you pretty much, I guess, being in education now, know what these kids are doing. It's changed a little bit, but obviously. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, if you, sports is, um, I, I believe in sports and the performing arts. I think they're both vital to young people growing up. But you, you need to keep it in perspective so that it doesn't dominate their life, that they realize there's more to life than throwing that ball or, or, or playing the piano or something that can enhance their lives. But they need to know that spiritual life, you've got to have a, a, a work ethic life, uh, there's a lot of components. Sometimes kids get consumed by the sports or consumed by the arts and, and that's all they think about and I think that's as much a danger as getting consumed by other things. We tend to want to stay off politics but you've kind of brought that up a little bit I want your, your take on it because you've been around education in our county for a very long time. We have a wonderful school out of Woodland that, that's a performing arts school. That's not to say that the other schools don't have performing arts and drama and type of thing. Educationally, you know, you've made that comment about uh, um, keeping a balance. H how do you teach a kid to keep a balance between the things that they're going through through sports and drama and, and education and the things that they go through? It, it's easy, I guess, in this society to get unbalanced in one area or another. It, it is. Parents have to be in sync with each other and, and understand what is important and, and what is nice to do. Uh, and, and they have to be consistent with that with their children. And the children need to see that that value is in their parents, that they're just not telling them that. But it's a struggle for parents, especially today, to keep that perspective. Uh, but they, they need to have discipline. They need to have jobs at home. Uh, so that the kids see there is a balance in life. That it's not all just playing ball, it's just not all uh, being in, in one act play or something like that. There are the other components of life that are important as they grow up. So that they do see that there has to be a balance. And those other things are important in sport. If you don't have discipline and you don't have a work ethic, you're not going to be very good at sports. And the same thing with band, chorus, or, or dance, or whatever the performing arts are. Let's go ahead, fast forward through now through your high school years. Um, you're married. How, tell, tell us the story. How did you meet your wife? And how, how long did you date? And how did that take place? And, and how much you have to pay her to get her to marry you? Well, I've always told folks that she chased me down. Uh, and, uh, but uh, we went to high school together. Uh, she was a couple of years younger than I am. And uh, so we were not in the same grade and really did not date until I was a senior in high school. I was very much involved in school. Uh, I, I loved sports. I, I loved school. Uh, I, I was an officer in my class every year. Uh, so I was involved in clubs and that kind of thing. Uh, and I just, uh, dating was fine, but it was not the end of the world for me. Uh, I, I remember folks were laughing at this. My mom forced me to go to the senior prom. She says, you will go. And, you know, back then, we decorated the gym for the same right. time. Yeah, well, then when I was right, too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, she said, now, you're, you're in charge of that. And you've decorated. You're going to go to the prom. And so she forced my hand to go. But uh, my wife and I dated for a little while my senior year. Did, did she, was she the one who went to the prom with you? No. <laughs> and then uh, um, about, a, I guess, a year later, to, to date some, uh, and then my, I guess my junior year in college, I went into the service, and then when I finished college, toward the end of finishing college, we got married, and very supportive, uh, uh, has been through my whole, my whole married life. Uh, we've had uh, two wonderful children, uh, Mary Beth uh, Tumlin, who was married, and got a two and a half year old grandson who is, we just love and trying to spoil every way that we can. And uh, then my youngest daughter, Lauren, uh, is uh, moving 
moving back to the farm now. Mary Beth lives on the back side of the farm, and now Lauren's moving back to the farm, so we'll have everybody back there. But uh, my wife raised two great daughters. Uh, she raised them the right way, uh, and uh, was a good role model for them. Uh, has, as I said, has been very supportive. She's one of those quiet people in the back. Uh, she does not force herself into the limelight and all. But I could not have done any of what I've done had she not been made invincible. When you were growing up playing sports, uh, I know your mother was in education. <clears throat> Is What was your high school or young dream to be? Did you always want to be in education? Or, or were you like a lot of us, I want to be a baseball player or I want to do something, fireman or something? No, I, I think I always knew that I wanted to teach. Uh, I was a first grade teacher. I, I, I love young kids uh, and love working with them. And I just knew from the get-go that's what I was going to do. I, I, I didn't think of anything else. And, and once I got out of the service and, and finished my degree, uh, that's what I started. I was a first grade teacher. Where was your first job at? First job was at Lima City Scopes. Oh. Uh, English Avenue Elementary. Uh, I was a senior in college, uh, and they were short on teachers, and so the government allowed them to come into the colleges and hire uh, students that were in their senior year that were going to be teachers and uh, teach and get paid. And so I taught there uh, that year, and then the next year I went to Cloverleaf Elementary and taught first grade. I taught second grade at English Avenue and then taught first grade at Cloverleaf and then transferred to Carsville City Schools and taught first grade. And, uh, from there, came back to the county to Adairsville Elementary. Uh, well, it was K-12 school back then. Uh, worked with Terry Drew. I was uh, assistant principal uh, for K-6 through six, and then uh, went to Kingston Elementary uh, as principal there. For four years. Do you want me to finish it up? Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, went to Taylorsville Elementary. Uh, that building was a 1936 building. I remember the building well. I played basketball in that gym several times. Yes, uh, I tell people the hallways were wooden and they rolled. Uh, and I, I, I told them you couldn't slip up on the classroom because they would hear you about a half a mile away walking down those creaky uh, hallways. But a great, uh, uh, a great school, great community. Uh, it, it convinced me that, that buildings are good. It's important to have buildings and stuff that you can teach uh, if you have good teachers. Now, having said that, that community of Taylorsville, you know, Bill Bill and Lula, that is probably one of the most proud, and I don't mean in a bad way, I mean in a good way, that is one of the most best communities we have around here where they just rally together and do things and, and support their school, right. probably in, in the county. Yeah, they, they were, uh, and of course I grew up out there. Right. Uh, Styles was not that far from Titusville. And, uh, but it, it is a, it was a lot of good people, uh, very supportive of me, uh, and, and that was great. Doug Harris was superintendent then. Uh, and then he brought me to the county office to be on the elementary curriculum. And uh, I did that and then went to Hamilton Crossing Elementary was principal for six years there, and that was a, a, a great school. Uh, Georgia Power adopted, one of the first times a business had adopted any school, and Georgia Power adopted Hamilton Crossing, and was just a, Georgia Power plant Bowen, and was just a great partner uh, there. And then uh, ran for school. So well, that's what I, uh, the part I want to, uh, one thing I want to get to is you did run, yes. and, and, and got beat fairly bad at one point. I, guess, I don't remember the exact number, you probably sure you do. But you lost yeah. that first race, yes. and then later decided to come back and run again, and we'll get to what happened after that. Um, but talk to me about losing. I mean, obviously, I, when you run for office and you, you feel like you want to do something and help the community and put out lots of money, time, and energy, how does that feel when you, you give your heart and you lost? Well, uh, you know, you put a lot of effort and time into it, and, and it, the clock seems to stop when you're running the campaign because everything comes to a screeching halt because you have to just devote every minute you've got to doing that. And of course, it was a county-wide right. 
campaign, and this is a big county. Uh, and, and so back then, as I believe now you should, uh, you had to knock on every door. Uh, so it, it, it was exhausting. Uh, Rayford Cantrell, uh, it was his first time to run. Uh, he was an assistant superintendent. We grew up out of he grew up in Tableville, I grew up in Styles, where our families had known each other forever. Uh, good people. Uh, so it was not a vicious uh, kind of thing, uh, but he did win. And then four years later, I came back and I won. Uh, he ran again and I ran against him and I won. So he and I were even. Right. Yeah. He was nearing the end of his career anyway. He was. Yeah, he left and went to, uh, I believe, Pickens County. Right. And then worked up in Pickens County. Tell me a little bit about this. You, when you decided to run for office, and, uh, and again, this is not a political point, but what is it that drives somebody to, in this case, an education, which, you know, I don't know if you've got enough money to pay me to want to be anything in education because it's a no one situation as you know um, no matter what you do somebody's going to dislike you and then when you're full with people's kids and you're full with some of the largest amount of money in the county you're, you can never do anything right no matter what your decision is what drives you to want to do that knowing all along that that's how that would be well the superintendency and, and school board offices are a little different than other political offices and I say that because the reason I ran uh, is I really have a desire to help Marto County move forward. I, I cared about the kids, and, and this was my home. And, and I, I wanted a, a great school system. I wanted us to, to move forward. So it was the desire to improve. It was not a desire to be a politician. And, and I've never been much of a politician. Uh, but. It, it, I really felt like I had something to contribute uh, that could help the system move forward. And, and I believe that uh, I, I did contribute uh, when I became, I was the last elected superintendent of Marshall County and first appointed. Uh, that was an awkward time in, in the state when we transferred from elected to appointed. I, I, to me, it, it, it is, you have to have a desire to want to make things better and feel that you've got something to contribute. And I guess that's where it would be with all the elected offices that are. I can't imagine why you would want to do it if, if, if it wasn't a desire to make things better and you felt like you had something to contribute to make that happen. While we're on that subject, what, what are some of the things over the last, uh, I know you've been, I uh, was a superintendent Left being a superintendent, worked for the state, is that correct? Yes. What did you do with the state? I uh, left and went to the State Department of Education as deputy state school superintendent. Um, I had a, a couple of folks to uh, call me. Uh, back then, I wouldn't even drive to Atlanta, much less think about going to work back then. And uh, Johnny Isaacson, who is now a uh, U.S. Senator, mm -hmm. called me and asked me would I come down there to work. And my response was no. Dr. Hall Rogers, who was a deputy superintendent down there, called and asked me to do the same thing. I told him no. Uh, they kept on, and I made the mistake of saying, I'll go down and talk to the superintendent. Uh, Linda Shrinko was the state school superintendent at that time. And I uh, met with her, and uh, they, they convinced me that I had some skills that would be beneficial. They wanted somebody that had not been a, a long time in the state or somebody that had been a superintendent and been so recently that could come and, and develop that relationship with local superintendents and the State Department of Education. And so I went in as the deputy state school superintendent and worked with her in the state board and then uh, was asked to go across the street and work with the governor's office. And that's all said and done, and, and this is a, um, you come back home and you decide to run for school board. Which, I can go back and say, well, it's because you still care about what goes on in your community. I, and I think that's probably maybe your answer. But people would argue, well, why would a man, after he's been the superintendent and worked for the State Department of Education, why would he, you know, he's, he's served in education for years. He's done maybe everything he's really wanting to do. Why would you go back and just the work 
because of the experiences that I had, I felt like I could be of benefit to the superintendent in the school system. Uh, I, at the governor's and at the State Department of Education, I went all over the United States. Uh, I had opportunities to be involved in a lot of things. When No Child Left Behind was passed by Congress, it was my role at the governor's office to implement that into the state of Georgia and develop our plan. Uh, so I had that experience. Uh, I, I was involved with Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. I chair that commission now and have been involved in that aspect of, of school improvement and, and that school systems doing what is best for boys and girls. Uh, I, I put together Georgia's school improvement process and, and got to be a part of that training in Washington, D.C., which was just exceptional. So I felt like with those experiences and those contacts that I had, that maybe I wasn't too old come back and share some of that with Bartow County. Uh, and that was my reason for running. Again, uh, I don't get thrilled by seeing my name in the paper. That, that's it, never, sometimes it's not good. Yeah, that, that's never been a motivator for me. Uh, I've been the opposite of that. I, 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 I do not like the limelight and folks say, how can you be that way and be in politics? Uh, I, I truly do not like the limelight. I, I like to do mine behind the scenes and, and work with people and, and get people motivated to do things themselves as a team. And, and, but I, I, to go back to your question, that's the reason I ran. I felt like I've got all this experience, do I just throw it in the trash and sit at home? Let's shift gears a little bit. We, we've talked a lot about um, your history and what, what you've done education-wise. But I had the opportunity to cover uh, FCA banquet uh, a few weeks ago uh, with the Carswell Christian Boys, and um, I got the opportunity to be in the back room where John Smoltz was there as the guest speaker, and he was signing autographs for some of the VIP people. And what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, Dr. Davis Nelson was working his fanny off in the back room. He wasn't at no VIP tables, right. and he wasn't uh, out you know, shaking hands for the votes or right. nothing like that. He was back there working. Tell me a little bit about your involvement with FCA. Uh, I've been involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, for Bartow Polk since right after it was organized uh, a number of years ago. I don't even remember how many now. Uh, I chair the local uh, group and uh, it's, it's a great organization and really and truly it is the last organization, Christian organization, that has true access into our middle schools and high schools. Uh, and, and that's a sad note. Uh, I, I remember as a teacher and as a principal, and even as a superintendent, as an educator, you could share uh, your witness with young people. You could share it with parents. You could share it with other staff members. And, and we're not worried that, that some group was going to come down and, and threaten your lives and, and threaten the school district. Uh, we had devotionals as a teacher, as a principal. Uh, we had devotionals every morning for, for all the students. Uh, we did it in a respectful way. Uh, the, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes is an opportunity uh, for young people to, to experience Jesus Christ in school. We have what we call huddles all the middle schools and uh, high schools in Carlsville and Bartow County. Uh, coaches are part of that. They, they are the uh, sponsor from the school standpoint. But students lead it. It is a student-led ministry. And they meet once a week uh, before school starts in most situations. And, and they have a, 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 a service that the students lead. They'll have speakers to come in. It can be area youth ministers or it can be a special guest to come in and they'll have those devotionals and then those young people are taught how to witness to their peers and, and we're having young people saved all over this county. I, I want to say I, I agree. I've got the opportunity to go cover a couple uh, FCA events, right. Fields of Faith, and, um, uh, a little bit of the Reggie Dabbs thing that uh, wasn't necessarily FCA but that there. And a, and a couple of the FCA early morning events, like at Woodland and a couple of places I could go. And, and I've been 
you're absolutely right. The, the idea that there's no Christianity going on in schools is just not true. The, these kids are, it, it's been amazing what I've seen out at some of the schools that I've been to to see what they're doing. Here's the big question. This, this is a Christian uh, event. So, and, and I asked everybody that comes up here, and it's not an embarrassing thing. I know you won't mind this at all because uh, I know kind of where you stand. Tell us, in your words, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, what this is like. As I told you earlier, I was fortunate to be a child of parents that knew the Lord, knew the importance of living out your faith. And so we were taught that at home, we were carried to church, to Sunday school. It was expected that you behave yourself spiritually morally in the way you were supposed to. So I was brought up that way. Uh, so it, it, it is a, it's a part of my life. Uh, now, if anybody knows me, they would tell you Davis Nelson's not perfect. Uh, I never professed to be. But had it not been uh, for that upbringing, I, I can tell you that there's no way I would have had the opportunities to do the things. You I've attend done. church at where? Reckon Creek Baptist Church. Church. And you're, if I'm not wrong, you're a deacon there, right? Yeah, that right? I, I chair the deacon board there and teach on Sunday school. Hey, I've taught Sunday school since I was 17 years old. Uh, and I've been a deacon there since I was 15. Now, I've personally been to a number of board meetings where uh, obviously y'all pray before the yes. board meetings. And I think, I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason how you do it, but you've personally prayed many nights at the board meetings uh, for the wisdom of God right. for the board. Right. And that obviously don't prevent um, disagreements and, and arguments that happen there. Um, and I guess I, I want to touch on this a little bit. As a Christian in politics, um, I don't care what you do or what your decision is. Um, somebody's not going to like your decision. Somebody's going to disagree with it. And many times people disagree on the other side. Sometimes they're Christians too. Yeah. And, and so it's really easy, I think, to be involved in politics and say, hey, well, you know, I'm the right one and no, you're, I'm the right one and we get this, this, this thing going on. And I'm sure that's not what you originally signed up for uh, when you ran years ago and wanted to be do something good. I mean, I know all the years now you, you faced and dealt with it for, for many years, so it's probably uh, you learned how to do it a little bit better. But how do you deal with that when you just truly believe you've done the best you can do or the right thing and somebody's going to stand up and tell you how you're of the devil or whatever they say? Well, number one, you've got to be well grounded uh, in Christ. Uh, as I was saying, uh, there's the just absolutely no way uh, a little country boy from where I grew up uh, with no more experiences in, in life than, than I had could have been involved in what I've been involved with had Christ not been a part of my life. Uh, I, I, there's nobody that can tell me that, that it would have happened had he not been a part of my life. And I really, especially in this day and time, don't understand how people deal with what goes on in the world uh, without uh, a trust in Jesus Christ. I, I don't know how they cope with it from day to day. Uh, but, but Christ is important in my life. It's important in my family's life, uh, my wife and my children. And uh, I made a decision a, a long time ago to trust Him. And, and when I make decisions uh, or take stands, I don't take those lightly. I, I weigh them out. I, I struggle with it. Uh, I try to be understanding of people who have different views. We can disagree, but we don't have to dislike each other. Uh, and I think that's what's happened in, in so many political things that people get personal with. I can disagree with a, a lot of politicians, but it doesn't mean that they're a bad person uh, because they could be right and I could be wrong with my thoughts. Uh, and I have been wrong in the past. Uh, you have to have a listening ear. You have to be calm. And, and I think if there's anything that God's given me, He's given me the ability uh, to be calm, uh, to, to let people rant and rave, call you everything in the world. Oh, and if you know that's the one, they will too. And, and, and still uh, stay calm and uh, uh, 
not get disrespectful to them. And, and I've tried hard to be that way. Uh, I, it doesn't mean I'm mealy mouth and mushy. I, I can be firm, but you can do that in a kind and loving way. And that's what Christ tells us is that, uh, and I believe we our, our ability to help other people see Jesus Christ is not going to come from here. It's going to come from our actions. How they see us day in and day out. And, and I don't